dear students today we will discuss the uh, topic of classical theories of economic development where we have several uh, growth economic theories so we will discuss one the most important theories we will discuss one by one uh, so today we will discuss uh, this is uh, basically the ch uh, this is chapter 3 in your todaro's book so you have to uh, read this chapter uh, carefully attentively and uh, uh, if you if you are read uh, the theories uh, from the book you are able to uh, you are able to ask the question uh, and also uh, understand the video lectures as well uh, uh, if but if you are not going to read uh, read these theories from your book uh, that you are not been able to understand the concept fully so learning uh, can be should be done with uh, like listening and reading is important in order to understand the uh, uh, any topic so first we are going to discuss that there are several growth theories so first we are going to discuss First, uh, okay. First, I'm going to discuss the classical growth theory. So, uh, under classical growth theories, uh, there are major key, uh, key takeaways. So, uh, the first uh, major uh, uh, idea regarding the classical gro growth theory, or according to the classical economists, uh, that the eco economic growth will decrease or end due to an increase in population and the existence of uh, finite uh, resources. So the classical theory basically postulates that a country's economic growth will decrease with a increasing population and limited resources. So uh, such a postulation is an implication of belief of classical growth theory economists uh, uh, who think that a temporary increase in real GDP, listen carefully, a temporary increase a temporary increase uh, what, what what is happening here there is happening a temporary increase in real gdp per person inevitably leads to a population explosion so which would limit a in the end what will what will happen which would limit a nation's resources so classical growth economy economic theory was uh, uh, basically saying that due to uh, if there is a temporary increase in real GDP, the, uh, the that increase uh, or the effect of increase in that uh, GDP is offset by the explosion in population growth. So, uh, in this way, uh, they said that uh, consequent, uh, consequently, this uh, population explosion lowering uh, uh, result in decreasing the layer GDP. So at, as a result, the country's economic growth will start to slow, which was increased uh, temporarily, but uh, that might be increased uh, 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 constantly or continuously or or increase more if there is uh, uh, if they they don't have a population ex explosion. But right now, due to uh, rise in pop uh, population growth, the that temporary increase is going to start uh, to stop, and go, instead of increases uh, increase, the growth will start to slow. But uh, 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 after some time, the more economic growth theory theories comes into the picture, and more modern progress has proved that uh, growth theory, uh, the the growth theory that uh, represented by the classical economists, is quite wrong. So uh, you will see in, uh, 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 in the next slides that why the uh, growth theory is law uh, is wrong what are the problem under this theory so first we will uh, uh, in order to critique or in order to reject any theory it is important that we should understand that uh, uh, actually what what is that theory is when you have if you have some understanding that theory then we are going to critique on that uh, that theory when we we don't have a now uh, now how, uh, now how uh, about anything then how we are going to do the constructive critique or uh, positive critique regarding anything so first we have to read this theory understand uh, we have we need to have good understanding that theory then uh, when, when we are going to discuss other growth theories then we come to know that what are the negative or demerits uh, the demerits of this theory uh, 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 so uh, first we will discuss the uh, this theory and its structure and then we move ahead uh, move forward to the next theory so understanding classical growth theory, economists behind classical growth theory developed an idea of a subsistence level to model the theory. Okay, the economists believe that if real GDP rose above this subsistence level of income, that it would cause the population to increase and bring real GDP back to the subsistence level. Okay, so modern progress has proved classical growth economists wrong. 
हिस्ट्री ऑफ क्लासिकल ग्रोथ थ्योरी क्लासिकल ग्रोथ थ्योरी वॉज डेवेलप्ड अलॉन्ग साइड द इमर्जिंग कंडीशन ब्रॉड अबाउट द इंडस्ट्रियल रेवोल्यूशन इन ग्रेट ब्रिटेन ड्यूरिंग द एटीन एंड नाइनटीन सेंचुरी द ग्रेट द ब्रिटेन हैव द इंडस्ट्रियल रेवोल्यूशन सो अकॉर्डिंग टू दैम इक्यूमुलेशन एंड प्रोडक्टिव इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ प्रॉफिट वर सीन एज द मेन ड्राइविंग फोर्स ऑफ दैट रेवोल्यूशन लिविंग इन द एटीन और नाइनटीन सेंचुरी द गोल ऑफ इकोनॉमिक वॉज टू डेवेलप अ साइंटिफिक explanation of their economic system and their functioning so they want to understand that how economic system work and how it will benefit the society so <clears throat> this is the historical background of the growth theory and then uh, we come to the structure model the model they have built according to them the quantity is the function of labor capital natural resources and technology here technology what they have done they assume the technology constant this is the major, uh, major drawback of their theory according to them the technology is constant okay so in this chart uh, on the vertical axis we have the uh, labor force on uh, and on the uh, 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 horizontal axis we have the labor force and on the vertical axis we have the total production the curve ow the curve ow outlines the total subsistence wages so o W shows the subsistence wages, okay, and this TP one and TP two shows the uh, growth basically. How uh, 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 they have growth uh, due to uh, any reason that we will discuss later. So now suppose that uh, now suppose that if the level of population is O n here, O n. This is the level of population, and level of output is O P, which is this one. Okay, level of population is O N, and level of uh, output is O P. The per uh, the per capita wage is is represented by N R. You see, this is the forty uh, five degree line, which is O W here. O uh, O uh, N R is the N R from the that forty five degree line to this point. N R is the per capita wage where, which is represent uh, which is represented in this picture okay is this graph so consequently the surplus of profit is rg from this point from the uh, 45 degree line from here to the here with it where it touches the tp1 point tp1 curve okay so uh, from uh, point r to g is the surplus okay and n n um, n r is the per capita wage okay the per, uh, the the uh, the uh, the cost or you can say that the per capita wage is n r the left over part is your surplus according to them so consequently, uh, consequently the surplus and profit is r and rg okay so uh, now because of the surplus the capital formation process comes into affect now they have the surplus so the, due to this re reason the capital formation process comes into the picture consequently the demand for labor increase because when the uh, investor uh, or the uh, manufacturer or saw that they have the surplus during that uh, sp any specific uh, uh, production of good so uh, they are encouraged due to this trend and they starting uh, uh, investing more and and they are going to work on the uh, capital formation due to capital formation now they have the extended bill you can say that they increase their capacity by increasing or hiring the more number of labor so leading to what will happen it will lead to rise the total wages as the curve move to gh here gh now they are going to uh, uh, high uh, demand more number of labor due to increase in demand of labor the wages of demand is also increased which is shown by gh okay so if total population remain constant at on now suppose that the, there is no change in the population the population remain constant at on and wages exceeds subsistence wage and wages exceeds from the subsistence wage which which were Uh, before we have discussed that nr so now wages exceeds from the uh, subsistence wage from nr to you can say ng uh, uh, from uh, previously it was nr now we suppose that it is ng then ng is greater than nr means now right now the wages are greater than the subsistence wages the subsistence, the subsistence wages was nr and now they are getting ng wages then 
the total population and total manpower will increase as the curve moves towards the OM. So now, after the uh, when the uh, uh, current wages are greater than the subsistence wages, which was previously uh, they have the trend uh, uh, in the previous or earlier. So now, due to this reason, after some time, the total population and total manpower starting uh, increase uh, start uh, start to increase, and they have the increasing tra trends, and it moves towards to the O to M. Previously, it is O N. Now it is O. M. Okay, because of the increase in population, surplus can be generated. Okay, in such a manner, the process will continue until the economy reach point E. So this process will continue until they reach to the point E. Now at point E represents the stationary situation. Here the classical become wrong. They wear uh, lots. Of, uh, they receive a lot of uh, critique. According to them, now they reach to the maturity stage. So uh, at point E represent. That's why it's known that this point E, the point where the TP1 uh, crosses the uh, subsistent wage curve or uh, OW wage curve. So here they said that. At that point, now they have they are at the stationary stage, where in wages and total output equalize, where the wages and output equalize, okay, and no surplus can be generated. Here you can see that surplus is generated at every step. They are able to generate the surplus. When they uh, moving close to the E, the surplus is start decreasing, and at that point where uh, the uh, TP1 curve, which is output curve, uh, intersect the OW curve, uh, this is the point where they reach to the stage of maturity or at the stationary stage. So that's why, according to them, now they uh, now they have no surplus. Uh, there is no possible. Uh, there there is not uh, possible. There is no possibility of creating any type of surplus. However. They also said that there is a possibility to uh, uh, and there is a possibility that due to technological prog progress, the production function will shift upward. You can see TP1 to TP2. They thought that if there are there is any kind of technology technological uh, progress, so th there might be a change and uh, then there is increase in production. But again, according to them. Uh, according to the classical growth theory, e economic stagnation can be postponed. Means that due to any technological problem progress, they postpone the uh, stagnant part or stationary stage for a time being. But they, uh, that maturity or stationary part has to be happened uh, with after some time. They are not be, uh, the e economy is not in a position to postpone the stationary condition or a uh, maturity or stagnant condition they have to reach at that point where subsistence which is equal to the uh, total production they are not they are not been able to avoid that uh, situation so ultimately ultimately they uh, the uh, subsistence wage curve and uh, production wage, uh, wage curve have to intersect each other so according to classical growth theory economic stagnation can can be postponed due to technical progress although or ultimately uh, it ca it cannot be avoided so this is the problem uh, this is the basically major problem in their theory and their what they the idea they have given the next part um, regarding the limitation and proposition of the classical theory i will discuss in the next part so